Good morning, good day, good whatever it is for you. Welcome to the mat. Welcome to this moment. <sighs> so yesterday, I don't know if any of you are Monty Python fans, but um, I am kind of obsessed with the Holy Grail. And yesterday, uh, we had something come up just now that I'm about to share. But yesterday felt more like one of those days where, I don't know if you remember the part where the big tall guys with the Fiji Loma Pompa whole thing. Anyways, blah, blah, blah. Um, there's this whole none shall pass thing that one of the characters says in there. It just felt like that day, like can't get through, nowhere to go. And um, so today I was sharing a bit about my day with my sweet little Kula online here in the live stream. And um, the lovely Daria brought in a quote that her grandma used often, and that is that this too shall pass. And that's where I'm at, just trusting life. Just like, whoa, okay, another wave, and there's this. And our beloved Ariel shared from the Jewish tradition, Gamze Ya'avor. And if I said it wrong, please come off and chime in. But that that is in the Jewish tradition, ultimately saying the same thing. Also, this will pass. And in the yogic tradition, we have the Abhaya Mudra, reminding us within the dance of Shiva, the cycle of consciousness, the five acts of consciousness as we move in and out of form and concealing and revealing and dissolution and rebirth that this too shall pass. Whatever it is, no matter how wonderful or how terrible, this too shall pass. Which is also appropriate because we're doing timings again today. And so the beautiful thing about timings is you know that it will pass in a certain amount of time. <laughs> Whereas in real life, we don't always know how long that time's going to be. But um, nonetheless, let's play here with um, some timings today. It'll just be a minute or two of strength training once we warm up a little bit in the beginning of our practice. But first, if you will, please just come to the mat. Allow your eyes to close and your awareness to drop inward. And no matter how wonderful or how terrible life is right now, this too shall pass. So may we really be present for the teachings in the apparent tragedies. And may we really be present for the delights, the wonders, the joy of life's gifts and pleasures. May we stay curious about it all. Open in chamatskara, the wow, the wonder of life. Tune in to the breath, our first and last teacher reminding us of the necessity of letting go and pausing in that emptiness, feeling ourselves okay, all good in the emptiness, and then welcoming, receiving the return of the inhale. Welcome, Lori. Pausing in the fullness, okay, doing well in the fullness. And again, trusting that letting go, the teacher of the breath, reminding us this is the way of things, the cycle of all things coming into form, pausing in their blossoming fullness, and then falling away, dissoluting, and we pause in the emptiness. And again, we receive and welcome whatever's coming. Experience whatever that is, being with it, knowing this too shall pass and letting it go, emptying out, pausing in the emptiness, feeling what's there, knowing this too shall pass and welcoming the filling up.
May we remember ourselves always a part of the earth, of the cosmos, affected by the movements of life, part of these great cycles that are happening within us, within our lives on every level. Just remembering this too shall pass by a Gamze Yavur. Continue with your breath for a few more cycles in this way. And as we move through these cycles, we get to choose again and again how, what we focus on, what our focus is. Thank you. So find a word word, a mantra, or an image that holds that focus for you. A word, a mantra, or an image of your dedication that holds the energy of what you would choose to focus on for this part of this cycle. And breathe into that. Maybe, maybe that is equanimity being okay with whatever is, doing what is being called for. Listening inward and responding with our responsibility. Exhale and root your fingers down next to you. Push into the earth, press down into the earth. Think about all the things underneath you that are making all the life around you work. All the decaying things, all the things that are dissolving out of form to become the beauty of the nourishment and the forms around us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And to all those things that help the decomposition the mycelial network that's communicating and just helping to disintegrate things. And the trees that are welcoming in our breath and transforming things of the air and the earth into our breath, into fruits, into beauty. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Follow any inhale and open the arms wide to the sky. Gather up energetically. Bring the hands together and center and focus. Push into the palms, squeeze shoulders on the back. Lift your heart, ears in line with the shoulders. See if you can sense your heartbeat. And again, breathe and repeat your intention, your point of focus, your yes, I am. Exhale and empty. Inhale your hearts. Yes, if you will, with me, let's alternate. Om and Hring, the being and the becoming.
If you've got your prayer hands together, maybe you press into pinkies and thumbs and blossom your fingers open. Imagine that lotus of your heart, your mind, your intentions, your offering blossoming open with this practice. May it be for the greatest good for all beings. Let's rise that up to the sky and ripple it out wide. Land your hands down next to you, push into earth, lift your heart, inhale, and as you exhale, chin to the chest. Slide the chin along the clavicle, right ear past the right shoulder, soft jaw. Inhale there as you exhale, chin rolling through center, slide it on over to the other side, pull that right shoulder down. Inhale there and exhale through center, follow your breath side to side. And then take your time moving with your breath. And next time that you roll to the right, slide over to the right and reach up at first just a bit through that left hand. Spread the fingers out wide and maybe move them back behind you a bit. And then as inspired, feel free to roll through that hand, shoulder, head, neck, and breathe into any other sides, uh, parts of the side of your neck and shoulder connection there, your jaw being part of that. You could stay with just that side neck opening, rolling or pausing, maybe a little nod anywhere that feels good. Or as inspired, we'll take it more into the side body, crossing over, push into that left sit bone, reach the right arm across, roll, face chest open, welcome the sky into your face, into your heart, and then swoop back down to earth. Follow your breath. And then take your time. We're going to take that up, back to center, push down next to you. Inhale, tall. <clears throat> Excuse me. And as you exhale, slide into your left hand. Reach that right arm out. Hand just up a bit. And then again, really actively spread the fingers and maybe pull the hand behind you a bit. And big breaths here as you stretch out between that top ear, neck, shoulder. <sighs> and then any rotations there help you find your sweet spots and send the breath right into them. You stay with that as you like, or press into that right sits bone, swoop, cross body. Inhale, open again, welcoming the sky into your face, your head, your heart, and sweep back down to earth. Let your breath lead, clearing that path before you, opening to what's coming, letting go of what you're done with, giving it back to the earth. And let your next breath lead you back up to sit. Inhale, lengthen up, wiggle up out of the waist. Maybe you want to switch the cross of your legs. I just did that. This is my non-habitual cross and spiral. Let's take a little twist here in our warm-ups. Root down, inhale, lengthen, exhale, squeeze, and spiral deeply into your twist. Shoulder blades down the back, heart lifts bright. Deep full breaths here as you're looking behind you. What are you saying goodbye to? Thank you. Thank you, thank you for your service. And we are done. Follow any inhale. Open back up to center, reach up. 
Exhale, spiral, other side twist, root down to lengthen up. Exhale, squeeze to center. Look behind you, breathe that twist. Saying goodbye, saying thank you. Even to the most challenging, messy things, whatever we have to integrate or learn there, so may it be. It's 11 11. You might want to make a wish now if you're into that kind of thing. I am, just for fun. And back to center, actually, this is what I like to do at 11 11 is put my arms straight up, make an 11, and just feel yes, all things are in alignment. I am a clear channel for life. Letting that flow through. Make your way onto your belly. We're going to do just a little more warm ups and then we're working into our um, core strengthening timed holds practice today again. So let's bring the elbows a little forward of the shoulders here and hold your elbows and give a pull on the earth with your elbows. Point your toes straight back, press into pubic bone and sacrum and lift the heart, lengthen forward, low back in, heart forward, breathe that stretch in your spine and your chest and whatever arises here. Feel your strong fulcrum, your snake's tail again, point back, push into pubic bone and sacrum, drag heart forward, lift up through the chest, lift up through the head, long back of the neck, a few more breaths. Breathe and repeat your mantra, your yes, I am. Each breath, a gateway to the next possibility. Inhale and drag yourself forward in this moment physically, sometimes entirely or energetically, and lengthen forward, come down. You could rest the forehead a moment if you like. Bring the hands under the shoulders and roll your shoulders around. And then pull back strongly with your hands, elbows and shoulder blades down the back. Again, press strongly into your snake's tail and let's go cobra. Rooting sacrum, pubic bone, lift navel, lift heart open. Long back of the neck. Ah, shining heart breath. You could stay up here a few breaths or if you'd like to with me, you can use the um, hiss or shushing breath. It's also cleansing for the liver, your organs, anger, resentment, all that stuff. So here we go, big inhale. As you exhale, maybe your snake's hiss coming down. <laughs> also kind of like you're deflating like a balloon animal inhale pull back open up if you're flowing with me go ahead or stay where you are One last time, we'll open up, inhale, and exhale, press back, child's pose. Toes together, knees wide, balasana, push your hips back to your heels. Maybe give your booty a little wiggle wag there, and push back and breathe, release in your lower back. All right, if you need to do any other warm ups for yourself, please do. We're going to move into forearm plank. We'll start that with Sphinx. So go ahead and move forward as you're ready to back to the belly. This time, uh, you could hold the elbow or elbows and straight out from there. Turn your toes under and prepare yourself. We are going to um, be reading today from Iyengar's book, The Tree of Yoga. I'm gonna start with that chapter, um, you know, the first tree of yoga, it's called. And there's no numbers on the pages, so it's page seven. Okay, so forearm plank, elbows under shoulders, pull back, strong core, toes under, inhale. First turn the toes under, lift the thighs. And as you exhale next, we got two minutes here. Come down as you need, back to Sphinx and back up. Here we go. The tree of yoga. When you grow a plant, you first dig the earth, remove the stones and weeds, and make the ground soft. 
Then you put the seed into the ground and surround it with the soft earth so carefully that when the seed opens, it will not be damaged by the weight of the earth. Finally, you water the seed a little and wait for it to germinate and grow. After one or two days, the seed opens into a seedling and a stem grows from it. Then the stem splits into two branches and produces leaves. It steadily grows into a trunk and produces branches in various directions with many leaves. Similarly, the tree of the self needs to be taken care of. The sages of old who experienced the sight of the soul discovered its seed in yoga. This seed has eight segments, which as the tree grows, rise, gives rise to the eight limbs of yoga. You're just over a minute now, you're more, almost halfway. The root of the tree is yama, which comprises the five principles of ahimsa, nonviolence, satya, truthfulness, asteya, freedom from avarice, brahmacharya, control of sensual pleasure, and aparigraha freedom from the covetousness and possession beyond one's needs. The observance of yama disciplines the five organs of action, which are the arms, the legs, the mouth, the organs of generation, and the organs of excretion. Naturally, the organs of action control the organs of the perception in the mind. 30 seconds. If one intends to do harm, but the organs of action refuse to do it, the harms will not be done. The yogis therefore begin with control of the organs of action. Yama is thus the Root of the tree of yoga. Then comes the trunk, which is comprised compared to the principles of niyama. These are sasha, cleanliness, santosha, contentment, tapas, arjur, this is tapas we're building here, swadhyaya, self-study, and ishwara pranidhana, self-surrender. Oh, perfectly timed for self-surrender. <laughs> ah, breathe your sphinx, come on down, pull back, heart open. Feel that heat that you've just generated and direct it to your intention, your yes, I am. <sighs> Breathful body, powerful being, yes, I am. Abaya timed everything with its cycle. So we're gonna do a side plank on the forearms at first, um, just a minute each. So we'll bring the, roll, we'll roll onto the side, bring your bottom forearm, so the elbow is just a little forward of the shoulder. So you can really scoop that shoulder blade down and keep the chest lifted. This could be pretty mellow by keeping the bottom shin down or stepping the top foot to the ground. Otherwise, if you have the wherewithal to at least try it, we're gonna come up for a minute into side plank and exhale empty inhale your yes give this energy to it here we go one minute then comes the trunk uh, we did that self-surrender these five principles of niyama control the organs of perception the eyes the ears the nose the tongue and the skin from the trunk of the tree several branches emerge one grows very long, one grows sideways, one grows zigzag, one grows straight, and so on. These branches are the asanas, the asanas, the various postures which bring the physical and physiological functions of the body into harmony with the psychological pattern of yogic discipline. From the branches grow the leaves whose interaction with the air supplies energy to the whole tree. The leaves draw in the external air and connect it to the inner paths of the tree. They correspond to pranayama, the science of breath, which connects the macrocosm with the microcosm and vice versa. Notice how, when inverted, our lungs give a representation of a tree. Down you go. Come to the belly and just roll that shoulder out. Now we'll move to the other side. Take your time getting set up on your side. Elbow a little forward of the shoulder. Scoop that shoulder blade down. Lengthen out the legs, tailbone. Find your core strength. And when you're ready, your variation, keep that heart lifted, press into earth and light it up one minute. From branches grow the leaves whose interaction with the air supplies energy to the whole tree. The leaves draw in the external air and connect it to the inner parts of the tree. They correspond to pranayam, the science of breath, which connects the macrocosm with the microcosm and vice versa. Notice how when inverted, our lungs give a representation of a tree. 
through pranayama, the respiratory and circulatory systems are brought into a harmonious state. The mastery of asanas and pranayama help the practitioner to detach the mind from the contact of the body. And this leads automatically towards concentration and meditation. The branches of the tree are all covered with bark. Without the protection of the bark, the tree would be eaten away by worms. That covering protects the energy flowing inside the tree between the leaves and the root. The bark thus corresponds to pratyahara, which is the inward journey of the senses from the skin towards the core of the being. Down you go. Roll it out. And if you've been doing this with me for the past three classes, notice if it's easier or harder today. Come back to your belly. Roll it out. Let's press back into child's pose. We'll give the shoulders a little counter pose here, a little stretch. So we're going to turn this child into a rabbit, toes under. Hold your heels and tuck your chin. Come onto the crown of the head and lift the hips as high as you can, thereby stretching between the shoulders and length of the spine. And take uh, three or five breaths there. Let's go for five. <sighs> The sap of the tree, the juice, which carries the energy on this inward journey is dharana. Dharana is concentration, focusing the attention on the core of the being. And so we are. Release that and interlace your hands on your sacrum. Squeeze the palms and then pull on them. Lift up to the sky with the hips and the hands. And squeeze palms up, up to the sky and then overhead towards the earth as much as you can. Breathe into that stretch of the shoulders. Any little wiggle or roll arounds fine there. Come out as needed. A few more breaths. The tree's fluid or sap links the very tip of the leaf to the tip of the root. The experience of this unity of the being from periphery to the core, where the observer and the absorbed, um, observed and the absorbed, is attained in meditation. When the tree is healthy and the supply of energy is wonderful, then the flowers blossom out of it. Thus, dhyana, meditation, is the flower of the tree of yoga. All right, kids, on to your hands and knees. And if you'd like to hear for a moment, let's just take little cat-cow, shoulder rolls, neck release, whatever you need there. Find some circular movement, fluid movement. And then really, really active hands. Spread those fingers wide. Claw the earth. You could always be down on both knees or with just one leg up or just one leg standing down. Lots of ways to mellow the pose without quitting. So of course quit if you need to, no big deal. Two minutes is a long time. <laughs> and um, you know, mellow it out maybe instead of quitting. See what's there for you. Find your heart soft, hands strong, core soft, ribs and hips connected. Inhale and as you exhale, we're going to start two minutes here. Finally, when the flower is transformed into a fruit, this is known as samadhi. As the essence of the tree is in the fruit, so the essence of the practice of yoga is in the freedom, poise, peace, and beautitude of samadhi, where the body, the mind, and the soul are united and merge with the universal spirit. Yoga works on each individual for his or her own growth, for their own growth and betterment, physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. It is meant for the whole of humanity. That is why it is called Sarva Bauma, a universal culture. When you are at one within yourself, yoga does not end there. Having acquired a certain discipline in body, mind, senses, intelligence, and consciousness, the yogi has to live in the world without getting involved in their actions. Less than a minute. This is what is known as skillfulness in action, which does not just mean dexterity. Skillfulness is when one performs one's actions without expecting good or bad results from them. The yogi's actions are performed without vice and virtue, but with purity and divinity. There is a tremendous balance to be achieved between the philosophical life and the practical life. If you can learn that, then you are a practical philosopher. To philosophize pure philosophy is not a great achievement. 
Philosophers are dreamers, but we must bring our philosophy into day-to-day -day life so that life with hardships and joys can be informed by philosophy. While being true to our own evolution and development about 10 seconds without giving up our individual spiritual path, can we at the same time live in society successfully? That is practical philosophy. Lower down, press back. And let's go again, Balasana, in a child's pose. Rotate your palms up. Breathe into that rotation of your shoulders, spinning thumbs towards the earth. Maybe pinkies even keep spinning up towards the sky. Ooh, and breathe into wherever sensation is arising here. You could stay with that or bend into the elbows. Bring the prayer behind the head and walk the elbows forward. Simply breathful here, or if you'd like, if you've got enough breathfulness here, Brahmari, bees breath. Breathe up from your root and into your mind's eye. See your intention, your blossoming. Mm -hmm. Inhale and unwind the arms, stretch out. Exhale and lift from the navel and roll on up. So we're going into side plank. You're welcome to keep the bottom shin down like so. Bottom uh, top foot could stand in front of that bottom thigh or you could be on the forearms again if being on the hand is not right for you. Either way, your anchor point on the bottom should be forward of the shoulder so that you can really scoop down. And again, on the side planks, we're only gonna go one minute. So prepare, find your breath fullness, and when you're ready, here we go. Deep full breaths. Yoga is firstly an individual growth, but through individual growth, society and community develop. If a hundred people are practicing yoga and can be seen to be healthy, then others are practicing yoga, oh, then others will begin to ask what they are doing. In this way, the numbers are increased, and soon there will be another hundred or two or three hundred. At one time, it seemed I was the only one who was doing this yoga with zest and zeal, but now look around you, how many people are doing it? So from the individual, it goes to the community, and from the community to the society. Why, why do you think of the violence of the world? Why don't you think of the violence in you? Each one has to train himself or their self, or without discipline, we cannot become free, nor can there be freedom in the world without discipline. Come on down. Nice job, all you disciplined beings. Press back or roll your shoulder out, anything that feels good there. And set yourself up for second side. Again, you might start with no weight on the hand and scoop the shoulder down. Ah, begin to find the leg setup that's right for you. And here we go. Discipline alone brings true freedom. If you have to gain health, do you think you can do so without discipline? Moderation in living is essential. This is why yoga starts with a code of conduct which each individual has to develop. One who is undisciplined is an irreligious person. One who is disciplined is a religious per person. Health is religious. Ill health is irreligious. On the contrary, we have to harmonize our lives. The circumstances of life are therefore our evolution, not for our destruction. The environment will often seem to oppose an individual's life. But can I not live as a virtuous person, even if others spend their time in the houses of ill repute, or suppose 10 people are drinking? I am not a drinker, but those 10 people are my friends. 
Come on down, roll it out, anything that feels good. When they invite me for a drink, if I say no, I am not interested, they will laugh at me. So I say, I will come, give me fruit juice and you take the alcohol. What does it matter? That means I can understand them. I am with them and not with them. I am within and I am without. That is known as balance. If we can live like that, it is religion. Ah, all right. Nice job, y'all. We did that. And let's ripple forward onto the belly. Push into your feet. Roll the shoulders around. Lengthen your spine out. Open up into cobra, dragging the heart forward again. Long spine. Dip the chin slightly and pull the ears back. Breathe wide across the wings of your heart, wherever your breathful edge is. And you could hold steady or again pulse in and out as is right for you. If you can, scoop the elbows in a little more, Lori, and pull the elbows and shoulder blades down the back. Even if you come lower, yeah, get the shoulders eased down away from the ears. Lengthen the side neck. Ah, so good to see you here. Inhale, bright heart. Exhale back, child's pose. Push into the hands and again, wiggle, wag your tail, breathe your lower back. Inhale, stretch it out and exhale, roll up onto the knees. If you need to, you could grab the mat and triple fold it back so that your knees are padded or get some... Um, Adding <laughs> whatever sort. And then we're going to do some opening stuff here after all that strengthening stuff. So if you have a block, a block could be very helpful here for protecting the low back and bringing in more core strength. If not, pretend you have a block, squeeze onto that block and spin it back behind you. And then lengthen your tailbone to plug into your block, zip up pubic bone to navel, and really find your strength and steadiness there in this foundation here. That's going to start in the upper inner thighs. So as much as we're opening here, we're really engaging that core strength that we just uh, spent some time cultivating. Press hips down, work the hands together as far as you like onto the back to really work the elbows and shoulder blades together. Keep squeezing onto the block. Notice as you start to open the chest, the block might spin forward. See if you can spin that block or your inseams back as much as you can. Lengthen tail, Lift navel, lift heart, squeeze the elbows and shoulders on the back. Keep a little dip in the chin so the back of the neck is long. Ah, this might be a great spot to stay very supported by yourself or come in and out if you need or flow one arm up, lengthen that front body line and flow the arm back. Maybe turn your toes under so the heel is closer or put your hand back where it came from. Do what's right for you. Other arm up, lengthening front body line, big inhale, and then land it back. Push down into wherever your hands are rooted. Squeeze the shoulders, lift the heart, lengthen the back of the neck. For some, that may mean dropping the chin towards the chest. Or if the shoulders are really squeezed together and you can feel that you're not closing the back of the neck, you may be able to lay on those shoulder muscles and still have a nice opening there. Oh, and I also like you to bring the bottom teeth over the top teeth, stretch out the jaw. Wow. Ah, big inhale, opening, welcoming the new. Thank you. Breathing the sky into your heart. Yes, thank you. Follow any exhale to squeeze your block, lift your navel, lift your heart, come up. And you can move back into child's pose or place the hands, squeeze the block and spin the block up and back as you come into downward dog. Long spine, long back of the neck, relaxed through the head, deep full breaths, breathful there, all the parts breathful. All the parts breathful. Individual growth is a must, and yoga develops each individual. But your body is an image of the world around you. It is a big international club. You have 300 joints. That means there are 300 club members associated in one body. 
The blood circulation is 96,000 kilometers long if you take all the arteries, veins, and smaller blood vessels together. And there are 16,000 kilometers of biological energy flowing in the nervous system. The surface of your lungs is as big as a tennis court. Your brain has four lobes. Is this not like a big international club in one individual? Yoga provides help to all these parts to coordinate together so they may work in harmony and concord. Yoga works on your conscience. Yoga works on your consciousness. Yoga works on your intelligence. Yoga works on your senses. Yoga works on your flesh. Yoga works on your organs of perception. Thus, it is known as the global art. When your body, mind, and soul are healthy and harmonious, you will bring health and harmony to those around you, and health and harmony to the world, not by withdrawing from the world, but by being a healthy, living organ of the body of humanity. Ripple on back to your knees. You can um, remove your block, maybe keep it closed, as we are going to... Um, have sitting moments, you may want to sit on the block. But for now, come to stand on the knees. Again, pad them as needed. And let's go up Parigrasana, gate pose. Turn, uh, extend the right leg out to the side, and then options. You can turn those toes up for a little more excitement in your hamstrings, or root into the outside of the foot. If you tend to turn the foot out already or have ankle sprain stuff, you may want to work with the heel up more. Find what feels right for you. Push your hips down. Lift and lengthen up out of the waist, <clears throat> and then slide on over into that right leg. Push into the leg, roll, face chest open, and reach from the standing knee through the fingertips. Stay here or inhale, open arm vinyasa. Exhale, sweep clear the path of the heart. Here's that gate pose moment. We're opening the gate of the heart, sweeping clear anything that we need to from the path to welcome clearly into our heart whatever's coming our way. Big breaths. Last time around in this way. And then we'll take the next one up and over. Again, you're going to look forward to bringing that hand a little forward of the shoulder. Scoop that shoulder down. And when you're ready, pick the back leg up, top arm up. Like a, I call this quarter moon because it's just like half moon, but the short version. So you can stay right here or Ardha Chandra Chapasana. Reach back for that top ankle or foot, putting a bow on the pose and kick back, squeezing the shoulders. Long back of the neck, slide the upper palate, your ears, your smile back over your shoulders, lifting the heart. Breathe here. Breathe and repeat your yes, I am. What are you directing this energy to? See it. Affirm it. Slow and steady, we're going to unwind the way we came in. Half moon, side stretch, a little different here on the exit. We'll swoop on through and come to sit on or between your heels. This is where your block might come into play. Virasana, hero's pose, coming to rest, feeling that stretch in your quads, maybe the knees, but zero sharp knee pain, please. Root down, lengthen up, ears back over shoulders. Soften your jaw. <sighs> Notice the difference in the sides. And again, we're going to come into Ustrasana or camel. So you could stay down longer if you like, or come back into this big front body opening. Again, maybe you squeeze onto your block, real or imaginary. Spin it back behind you. Plug the tailbone into it. Zip up, pubic bone to navel. Work elbows and shoulders on the back as you press hips forward. Again, stay here or wherever your breathful edge is, or stretch one arm up. Float it back, so whatever's right for you. And then the other side. Three to five more breaths. <sighs> big, big inhale, stretch it out. 
as you exhale, lift from the navel, lift from the core. Again, block or not, imagine you've got one, hands forward. You could go back to child's pose if you like, or downward dog. Spin the block back, relax the neck, pull back through the hips, relax the neck even more. <sighs> Breath, full body. Big inhale, lengthening. Exhale, ripple, back onto your knees, standing. Lengthen up, tall spine. Shift the left leg out to the side. Press into that heel, toes back, or outside of the foot, root down. Press in, lengthen up, as inspired. Opening that gate, slide into the bottom leg. Push into it, roll face chest open. Reach that top arm up out of the bottom knee as far as you can. Ah, stay there or inhale open to the sky, welcoming. Sweep and clear that path to the garden of your heart. Inhaling open, exhaling, clearing the path to the garden gate here. A couple more. On this last one, up and over, hand just forward of the shoulder, scoop it down, bring that extended leg into the core, scoop the shoulder blades down, find your quarter moon here. Stay with that or bend the ankle and knee, put a bow on it, reach back for ankle or foot, kick back, squeeze shoulders, smile your ears back over your shoulders, deep full breaths. Slow and steady when you're ready. Unwind, half moon or quarter moon. Side stretch. Inhale and exhale, flow it back to center. Take pause again to sit on or between the heels anywhere you need to, to not have any sharp knee pain, but just be present with that rush of energy we get from that big opening. Inhale and gather up that energy, direct it to your heart, your heart's yes, your intention, your blossoming. Uh, please stay as you like or slowly unwind yourself back into Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog and bicycle your feet out, relax your neck, breathe your spine, stretch back, strong core, long spine, inhale, lengthen. Exhale, bend into knees and hop or step forward. Inhale, hug feet to earth, muscles to bones. Lift your arches, knees, quads, root to rise. Press into the earth and roll on up to stand. Exhale, root down. Feel that earth energy, powerful body, earth body. Gather up, open to the sky, light body, sky body, and bring them together where they're already together, right there in your heart, but just feeling that balance of all that you are known and unknown, all that this life, that this world is, known and unknown, form and formless, and everything in between. And slow and steady, hug to center, pour the weight into the right foot. And at first, I just want you to lift that left and cross it, cross body, and point that left hand down to your left foot. This is the action of revelation. And here's Abhaya Mudra. This hand that's like how or stop, abaya, abaya. Everything has its cycle, its time. No matter how wonderful or how terrible, it's not lasting forever. Be with it. Stay curious about it. 
So this top arm going across, this is the, the concealing of the heart, forgetting our divinity, forgetting our unity. And then this hand we're pointing to is the concealing, the revelation, the stepping, the opening into that fullness. And the abaya, we're going to forget, we're going to remember, we're going to rejoice, and we may just suffer. Ankle over knee, hands to heart, sink it down. Press the thighs back, lift the navel, heart forward, drop low. Any edge of this hip opening pose, or go into the arm balance as you like. We've got about five or six more breaths there. And then take your time, lift up and step wide. We're going to turn heels in, toes out, cross the arms over and sink down. And here we have in one hand, the drumbeat of creation, the coming into form. In another hand, the fire of dissolution, the burning away of the form. And so it is always these things happening, always these cycles of creation and destruction. <sighs> slide it on over back to a center stand. And when you're ready, second slide, slide that right foot up, point the hand across the heart, pointing down to the revelation, concealing the forgetting that just happens. One of those five acts of consciousness and the revealing here, the next step in the dance. And so it is, everything with its cycle, everything with its time, this too shall pass. Stay as you like or transition it as it feels right for you, ankle over knee, sink down, thighs back, spine long. Elbow to ankle and knee, lengthen out, soften the jaw, keep that top foot flexed, breathe your hip or wherever sensations are rising. <sighs> Stay with that, find the arm balance, whatever's right for you, another five breaths or so. Take your time once you're done there, hug in to center, unwind again, step wide, find that fierce pose, <sighs> holding all of it, the drumbeat of creation, your heartbeat, the fire of dissolution, also known as destruction, birth and death in cycles, one feeding the other, the letting the go and the welcoming. Uh, you could stay in this pose and just meditate on that. Or if you'd like to, a little spiraling here. Fingers down, hands inner thighs, push back, lengthen, inhale. Exhale, spiral, navel back, twist. Inhaling to center and exhale, spiral. Follow your breath. Last couple breaths. Open to center once you're done. Inhale strong and exhale, pull it together. Padasana, strong mountain pose, strong feet. Hands could be at heart, samastiti here, open, rooting down, creating this kind of mountain shape. Feel the steadiness of your being. That unchangeable nature of your unconditional loving awareness, the pure essence of who you are beneath all these changing forms of mind and body and self-expression and identity. like weather around us, feelings and thoughts and experiences, just like weather around the steadiness of our being, that light of pure awareness within us 
yes, that's who we are. The anahata, the untouchable, the unbreakable self at center. Dancing with joy and wonder at all the possibilities of being an embodied being. <sighs> Open wide and gather up and exhale center and focus. Hands to heart, pause and feel your heartbeat, the heat and energy of your practice. If you will with me here, Om and Huring, the being with the hands together, the oneness, the becoming, the blossoming, the coming into form. Oh. Hey. your strong mountain heart up to the sky. Blossom the lotus of your being out wide, the blessings of our practice out wide. May all beings benefit and then step wide and sink down, Malasana. And right here in Yogic Squat, I would like to invite you to choose. Are you gonna slowly lower your seat down and take pause in meditation? Or are you gonna lower all the way down into Shavasana for final resting. It's Friday as I record, it's a shorter class and it always comes on me suddenly that it's time already. Um, so I'm actually running a little late, but I'll be on time for my next class. Um, so maybe set an alarm for yourself. I really encourage you to set an alarm unless you have time to just freely stay for an extended period. Find a final resting pose or meditative seat and have a goal time or just a goal to let the impulse of awareness lead you to whatever's next. But take time, please, to integrate the practice of the physical and pretty big energetic stuff that we've focused on today. And whatever happens next, may you remember this too shall pass, no matter how wonderful or terrible. Stay curious, stay in wonderment, and thank you for your presence. Thank you for your practice. Abaya, this too shall pass. And I still have to look at it because I'm learning the, the Jewish version. Gamze Ya'avur. Also, this will pass. Thank you, my dears. Blessings. Namaste. I'll see you soon. Mm -hmm. Thank you.